All right, if you guys are in the middle of consuming a beverage or have food in your mouth, I'm going to give you 10 seconds to uh, clear the palate so nothing shoots out your nose uh, or there is any a choking incident because I need every single one of my fans out there alive. But check this shit out. Gran, 76, and Hubby, 23, create uh, racy online content. A couple with 53-year age gap, gap wanted to share their love for one another with the internet and have since created explicit online content. All right. So, yeah, yeah. Now, it. listen, I am not here to tell anyone who they can and cannot love. If these two are really in it to win it, more power to them. All right? But I'm going to be honest here. It looks most unappetizing. <laughs> Okay, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. All right, uh, they got married in 2015. Two weeks after meeting at her son Robert's funeral. Well, I'm going to tell you this right now. You, you got to pretty much have a, a silver or a gold medal in picking up uh, women to do it at a funeral. All right, just saying, that is odd. At the time, Gary was 17, and he had recently split up with a 77-year-old woman. Amelia was then 71. They are now age 23 and 76. They live in uh, Tennessee in the United States and are still going strong. And they launched their own, you guessed it, only fans account. All right, here we go. There you go. Just let the vomit bubble up. Just embrace the inner vomit. Here we go. <laughs> uh, the adult social network allows content creators, including sex work, to interact with fans, make money while doing so with subscription fees. Yeah, we all know how OnlyFans works. I got it. They charge uh, eleven dollars a month. Subscribe. Uh, eleven a month, or is it a pound a fifteen? I don't know. OnlyFans page, and they're currently offering a discount price to just five fifty and seven fifty. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you can watch this twenty-three-year-old. Uh, you know, bang your uh, Mima. Yeah. You having fun yet? You having fun? Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> All right. I'm sh have you guys heard? You, uh, you guys have heard of Sex in the City, right? Everyone's heard of Sex in the City. Well, you're going to love this one. Let's see if I can find it. There it is. All right. Sex in the City cast, where are they now? All right, so here they are here in their early 30s, late 20s, when they're on the show. And this woman here was touted as, like, you know, at, during the show, like, men were just going crazy for her, you know. And for the most part, back then, they all looked fairly elegant I'm not going to say any of them are ugly because that would be a lie and I'm not good at it. But it is what it is. All right, let's see. We're going to go down to the pictures here. Okay, no, no, no. Here we go. So there she is. In, she's probably in her mid-20s here. And here she is today. All right, now see here, you got the, the wicked-ass neck. You probably got them old woman stringy things that, you know, hang down. 
on their necks. And listen, men get it too. But for the most part, when you're talking to a dude, you don't look at his neck and go, hey, you got a fucking, you got a string bean hanging or whatever the fuck's going on. You know, unless they have no neck, then men will make comments about that. Or, uh, you know, I've known a lot of Mexican dudes. They get a little portly when they get uh, north of 35. And I call a lot of those guys hot dog necks because it literally looks like a pack of hot dogs in the back of their neck. So, I mean, I got it. But men, for the most part, unless they're, you know, morbidly, morbidly obese or incredibly short, hold weight better than women. They just do. Is that fair? Maybe, maybe not. Do I care? No, I don't. This is just the way the world works. Like, God damn, that, look, just look at that. She's got to put all that eye makeup on there to hide like the, the wrinkled pits. That's the, uh, the skin that's hanging on there. She could probably donate that to uh, burn victims or something. You know, your burn victim, like, yeah, you know, I got some skin from uh, this woman's eyebrow or eyelids and what have you. And that's on my right side, left side. You know, that's just, you know, basically leftover skin from circumcisions. All right, laugh it up. It is what it is. But yeah, wow. Here we go. This, now this one, she literally aged off a cliff wow look at that i mean look at those crow's feet that's pterodactyl feet that's not crow's feet anymore look at that she's got one two three four horizontal lines on each side she's got jowls she's hiding the strings on her neck Listen, the, the, women need to understand, they have a very small, finite window of opportunity. And feminism has lied to a lot of these women, stating, no, you, you don't, don't worry about that. There'll be plenty of time. And then when these women get in their late 30s, they turn 40, feminism forgets about them. They're quite literally abandoned on a desert island as the feminists roll away looking for the next you know idiot who's going to buy into this shit uh, and dogs you know whatever oh here we go now this one you know she aged okay all right her face doesn't really you know there's a little bit of crow's feet to be expected okay you look at this look at there this, there's a lot of the same jawline and symmet you know, symmetry going on. Uh, you know, there is a little neck action going on, but it's not that bad. It's not bad at all. Oh, yeah, look at this one. Oh, redhead. Aged like banana pudding. And the reason I say that is this. I've known a lot of redheaded women. My ex-wife was one of them. And they were hot, hot, hot in their 20s. But once the wall starts, it isn't like a one or a five year, three year window thing where it slowly happens. It's quite literally almost overnight. That's why I call them banana pudding. You take the banana pudding out of the refrigerator. By the time you walk it, to the dining room table, it's already turning brown on top. That's what we have here. Oh, look at this. She's got jacked up teeth. Got the neck thing going on. Obviously, she's dyeing her hair now because it's gray. Hiding a bunch of stuff here with the uh, oversized towel pillowcase thing she's wearing. Got it. All right, now here are the dudes. You know, not bad. Not bad. He, get, he put on a few pounds, grayed up on top. He still has most of his hair. On. I can't see the top. Not bad. 
All right, this dude here, he aged a little rougher. And you can tell he likes to drink. He's got all of this uh, thing forming on the end of his nose. Either he drank a lot in his youth or he's still hitting the bottle. This is very common for alcoholics. All right, now this guy didn't age at all. Look at this. I don't know if it's the bald head, but look at that. Bravo. Not bad. Okay, here we go. Now, this dude, this is the typical aging pattern here. Look, my face is doing the same thing his is. You know, I'm getting the smile lines and what have you. The lines on the forehead. Yeah. I mean, look, men just age better. You know, it just, you know, give me your opinion in the comments in regards to aging between men and women. All right, now this dude aged quite well. And this is another guy. He barely aged at all. Look at that. And this guy's a good actor, too. I mean, he gained a little bit of weight here. It happens. Not a big deal. Not bad. Now look at that. Look at that. That's pretty good. What did you say? Boom. Remember this one? Yep. She's, uh, I believe she's, what, from Holland or something back in the day? And this was back when she was the uh, bombshell vixen. And not so much anymore. Oh, yeah. What about this one here? Look at that. All right. This one definitely pulled the pin on the fat grenade right here. All right. Over here. She looks okay. Over here. Ruin. Here's another one. Before. After. Before. After. Now, I want you to just look at some stuff here, okay? See that neck? That's not bad looking. You see it now? It's got wider. Probably, you should probably put on a good 40 pounds. Yeah, not aging well. Oh, look at this one. She had a lot of work done. She's got the duck mouth, the whole deal. Wow. Mmm. Look at this one here. I, it's, is this the one that was on the original Top Gun? I think it was. This is her back in the day, and this is her now. Yeah, not good. Madonna. I had to throw Madonna in here. You know, and from what I hear from some... Uh, listen, uh, this woman travels with a lot of security. Or at least she used to. I know... Probably throughout the years, four, maybe six guys who worked security for her. And some of the shit they told me was unfucking believable. I mean, she's incredibly unsanitary, very dirty. Uh, she worries 24 7 about her, you know, her looks and her skin, and to the point where she, like, puts on slathers on a bunch of lotion and like wraps up in this like sleeping suit to keep her skin from getting all fucked up all right now here's the dude here now this guy this is michael douglas i mean he's got like he's i don't know if he's still alive or not but he had throat cancer he went through all kinds of medical shit and uh you know he aged quite well now here is i believe this is uh the former wife of Tom Cruise. All right, she aged okay. All right, here's uh, Gear, Richard Gear. Again, not bad. You know, I think he's like in the 70s now. All right, here's uh, Sharon Stone. All right, 
I remember back in the day when she did uh, the boil bunny move the uh, what's it uh, the bunny boiling movie and uh she was very uh alluring okay and I believe one of the scenes she opens her legs and shows everyone her vertical smile and now not so much all right now this is an old star here uh, if her name escapes me i think it's sophia loren she was incredibly uh beautiful in her youth and she's aged not too bad okay but just because the wrapper on the package looks good doesn't necessarily mean it isn't wrapped around a box of shit. So, I'm betting a lot of these women who looked really good back in the day, it was all flash in the pan kind of thing, and their inner core is probably pretty shitty. Here's Uma Thurman. I, I, this doesn't even look like the same woman. Uh, I, I know this one here. But, but look at that. That, I mean, I, I'm not going to say she aged poorly, but I can say there was a lot of work done, in my opinion. All right. Money, let's see. Money struggles. I was a supermodel. Now I'm so broke, I'm getting a job in a supermarket, says... Uh, Marie Helvin, age 69. Alright, so the 69-year-old recently opened up about her financial struggles, confessing that she thought about moving home to Hawaii where she grew up. And then she admitted considering uh, getting a job in a supermarket because she's so broke. Here she is in her younger days. Okay, the supermodel had a very successful career since she was uh, scouted in Japan at the age of 15. Uh, she has appeared in many editions of British, French, and Italian Vogue, as well as working for brands such as Ya Saint Laurent and Valentino. However, the past years have hit her hard. Uh, Marie said, I'm completely self-reliant and I don't know what I'm going to do because during the pandemic period, I've used up most of my savings. Now I'm seriously thinking about going home. Huh. The star thought about getting a job in a, f in a food store where she grew up because she feels like she wouldn't be uh, judged for it. Listen, if you need to get a job to... like." Put food in your face. There's nothing wrong with that, okay? And she, she added they have less stigma about age uh, with getting jobs. You can get a job at Whole Foods in your 80s in America. Mm. Let's see. Uh, Marie married ex-husband and photographer David Bailey in 1977, 1975, but divorced 10 years later. Also, uh, she also said that having a partner would have been able to ease her money struggles during her hair time. I don't know if they misspelled that, but typically if you have a partner, your chances of being in poverty are way down. Let's see, what would be nice would be able to help uh, as I get older to be able to share expenses of getting older, Marie confessed. And then she, after David, she dated Mark Shad for four years. Yeah, okay. What a shame. I think there's a sound bite with this. Let me see if I can hear it here. Is this it? Yeah, here it is. Now, this is her actually speaking here. Um, used up, uh, during this pandemic period, I used up most of my savings now. And I'm seriously thinking about going home. I mean, the timing is not good. You know, this. Why would home as, as in Hawaii, you mean? Yeah. 
Well, I think. Uh, and would that be America, better? Yeah. They have a less stigma about um, age with jobs. I mean, you can get a job at, uh, what's it called? Whole Foods in your 80s in America. I don't see you working in Whole Foods. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> but let me, let's put it this way. I, I wouldn't apply here in England, but if I have to, if I'm home in Hawaii and I need a job, I'd go there and work. Boom shakalaka! All right. So who else has overwhelming pity for her? Miss Supermodel. Right. This woman had the world at her fingertips. Probably made an ass load of money. And like most women, ran through that money like grass through a goose. She didn't stay married. Now she has no kids. She's single now at almost 70 and has to get a job at Whole Foods to pay the bills. Now, there's nothing wrong with having to work when you're older. It just is what it is. Got it. But back in the day, if, you were, if she was married, odds are she probably would have a lot easier time because historically men provide and they do so for the most part a lot of them until they die and that's probably why a lot of them choose to die a little younger than women because they're done what we're seeing there with her is a snapshot of what's going to happen to roughly 50% of the women out there who are single and childless in their 30s. Because okay. chances are they're not going to have kids. Who's going to pay their bills? I'm not fucking paying their bills. They could fuck off. All right, nobody, nobody's paying my bills. All the money I got, I, I earned it. I paid for it with blood, sweat, and tears, and probably my immortal soul. Watch Grunt Speak Live every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And if you'd like to join Pop for Supporters Sundays, consider making a donation on Locals, Patreon, or Subscribestar.